Hello everyone and welcome back to the Glosser channel. I am currently in Melbourne, Australia to speak to Jackie Dundee regarding the situation concerning the coronavirus here in the state of Victoria. How are you doing today, Jackie? Good, thank you, Robert. Thank you for being on the program. I had to travel a long way to get here, but it was well worth the effort. Oh, thank you for the invite. Look, what I want to talk to you about is a rather unique situation going on in Victoria at the moment, and that pertains to a level of overreaction or what they're now calling overreach by government and it seems to be particularly pronounced or noticeable here in the state of Victoria and in the city of Melbourne where we are right now. Can you give me some in information on situations that have arisen from the various protests you've attended regarding COVID and the imposition and restrictions that are being applied to the general public? Well, look, there's no doubt about it that Victoria was the uh, hardest hit. Uh, our police force were literally attacking and abusing us, inciting violence, etc. The way Victorians were hand handled by the police, the police are really guilty of um, indictable crimes. Uh, we have always protested peacefully and lawfully. The police, um, as I said, were extremely violent with us. A lot of this at the beginning, for example, they would grab people, the speakers in particular, and then, you know, people from the crowd. But I remember on several occasions they would make a big show. They would grab people, drag them through. When we were at Parliament House, they, there was a procedure where they'd drag them up to the back of the building, along, down the side, throw them into the divvy vans, and then... On occasion, they would simply drive them a few blocks away and drop them off. Well, this, this raises an important question, Jackie, an important point. I've heard that the fear-mongering is getting out of control. All of these incidents, you may even want to call them stunts, where people are being physically, forcefully arrested. It's being done for the news cameras, and then the general public sees this on the nightly news and says, oh... I'm not going to attend a protest because look at what might happen to me. Do you think that's what's going on here? Is that the agenda? Is that the, the strategy that's being used? Look, that has occurred, but the violence has also occurred off camera. So the police have been extremely heavy handled and that, that has happened to numerous friends of mine as well. They've been manhandled, they've been trodden on, heads pushed into the ground, etc. But I think there was a lot of propaganda put out onto the news for exactly that purpose, to instill fear into the people. So they didn't come and stand their ground at these protests. They were scaring them away. There's no doubt about it. So some of the arrests were not faked, were not stunts performed for the camera. Some were, in fact, very real. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, have you yourself been arrested? I, I believe there have been some instances, because obviously you attend the protests, not just as a punter, so to speak, but you will speak to the crowd, you will address people, you will stand there with a the microphone. Look, I've, I've lost track. I think I've been in handcuffs now six or seven times. I've been charged on uh, four occasions. Uh, the interesting thing is on several of these occasions, the police don't know what to charge you with. And they will try things on. So by the time I got up to the processing table and I asked them the question, what crime have I committed? Uh, what, what's the charge? And they'd look at me and they'd say, well, you don't have a mask. And I'd say, well, I don't have to wear a mask. And you know it. And you can see um, a lot of the older, more senior officers will sort of give that, yeah, well, we know that. So what else can we get you for? So there was another, t uh, another one of those occasions we had this uh, five kilometer radius, but I was inside it, so they couldn't get me for that. So then they trumped up a third charge of incitement. Do you think this is a case of the police not knowing the law or willfully turning a blind eye to it? Many people, for example, will say to me, Jackie, look, the police don't know the law, but I think you're saying they do. No. Absolutely, they do not. They do not. The police have got no idea about the supreme law of this land, the Constitution. The police believe that the statutes, they work under statute law. I've had numerous conversations now with senior constables. 
putting them in their place basically and giving them an education, telling them their statute law sits on the bottom rung of the ladder. Our constitution is the supreme law of this land and they are in breach of their oath to protect the people and to uphold the law of this land. Secondly, they are being used as puppets in a political agenda. That's what they are being used for. They are not upholding the law at all. They're not aware of the constitution, which is another major change we need to make in this country, is that all our judges, police, um, if all our lawyers, everyone that has anything to do with law enforcement, the courts, etc., must all have studied the constitution and passed tests, tests in it, and we need to get it back into the curriculum. So people know their rights. This is what's happened. People don't know their rights. And that's the reason why the overreaction, or as they're now calling it, overreach, police overreach, that's why it's occurring. The whole issue of people being able to separate fact from fiction, knowing the truth, knowing their rights, knowing the law. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people living their day-to-day -day life don't know these things, and, and to some extent it's understandable why they don't. They're living their own life. We're living in a, a brave new world. Things have changed greatly. I think we probably are now facing a time where people will have to start thinking for themselves if they haven't yet, and they're going to have to start doing their own research and investigation rather than simply believing whatever they saw on the nightly news. That's exactly right. I mean, all you are seeing on the mainstream media is a scripted narrative it is propaganda. You are not getting the true story. They are not giving you the um, advice of experts worldwide. I mean, we've got the Barrington Agreement. I can't remember what that's up to. It's 60 or perhaps 80,000 doctors and scientists worldwide. This COVID is a hoax. To the best of my knowledge, it still hasn't been identified. Um, the CDC do not have any samples of it. It is just another form of SARS-1 or SARS-2. Would you agree that coronavirus, COVID-19, does in fact exist? It may simply be another variant on pre-existing types of viruses. Some people say it doesn't exist at all, it's a total hoax. Do you believe it's real? I personally do, regardless of whether others agree with me or not. But I also think it poses nowhere near as much risk or threat as we are being led to believe. Look, I would suggest that if, if COVID-19 is what they want to call it, it is only another strain of SARS-1 or SARS-2 or it is a coronavirus. And SARS, the SARS viruses and the coronavirus have been with mankind for as long as we have existed. And the strains of these viruses mutate continually. So it's nothing new. They have, they have manipulated um, the death rates to try and justify this alleged pandemic. Um, the, there is no medical, scientific or physical evidence that there is a pandemic. So globally, if you go to uh, the statistics, the death rates in each country. So, for example, in Australia, if you went to births, deaths and marriages or the Australian Bureau of Statistics, you will see that there is barely any change. In fact, there might even be less deaths in 2020 than there was in 2019. And... The most important thing to note is that if you look at the causes of death in these years, you will find that things that have always sat on you know, a fairly even playing line, or they have now just skyrocketed to zero. So there's no heart attack, there's no stroke, there's no influenza or respiratory disease, etc., etc. They've all bottomed out to zero. And then all of a sudden, there's this new cause of death, which is called COVID-19. The way they have manipulated this as well, there are reports worldwide, I mean, hospitals, retirement villages, etc., were offered incentive payments here in Australia, in Victoria in particular, of thirty-five dollars to $40,000 per COVID death they listed. Why on earth would you have to 
give people an incentive to list someone's death as something. If they really died from that, you don't need to get paid to put that on the death certificate. The bribery and the manipulation of figures to attain, um, I guess, or to be able to give people the perception that people have died from COVID-19, the lengths that this government has gone to is astronomical. Is this being done to justify widespread purchasing of the various vaccines, whether it be Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Moderna? Is this what, is this the, a financial ploy? Well, I think the whole, this whole COVID thing, obviously it's on a global scale here, but um, absolutely it's a ploy.